Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Chromebook Classroom, except for today is kind of a special treat because it's a crossover episode. We have got the, the creator of Assessment Bytes. Uh, my lovely friend Jennifer is here today with me. And you know, you create weekly episodes helping people with assessment. I create weekly episodes helping with Chromebooks. We're smashing them together today. How's it going, Jen? It's going so well. I, I'm <laughs> loving that this is just a way to help all the people. I love <laughs> as it. As much just, as they want. For everybody who's watching, do you want to tell a little bit about who you are and what you do, just for anybody new to, to your videos? Sure. So my name is Jennifer Espeo Harasimiak, and I am one of the assessment and reporting consultants with Edmonton Catholic Schools. And uh, you know, with the pandemic, it became difficult to go visit all of the people yes. all the time. Uh, and so we started offering, you know, these little bite-sized portions of professional learning. It's evolved a little bit. So last year it was 30 minutes at lunchtime or after school, and it was very well received. Um, and now we're looking at five to 10 minute videos here and there. And, uh, and people are responding nicely. So we just keep giving the people what they want. The world of video, yeah, video assisted learning. Thank goodness for YouTube. Thank goodness for creating this. And, and what I love today is we're really talking about that teacher time saver and, and putting things together. Now, you know all things assessment. You have been the assessment goddess in the division for many, many years. But what I love is you're always evolving how that can look like. Now, we're talking today real time data. Like, why do I need information and assessment about students right away? Because I'm thinking back, Jen, to like my classes, and it's like I give an assignment and I give it to the students, and then they hand it in to me. And then when I have the opportunity, and I try my best to get it done quite quickly to provide that assessment to provide, whether that's qualitative or quantitative, and then I get it back to the students some time has gone past in between i'm not gonna lie but you're gonna talk to us today like why do i need real-time data when it comes to assessment well when we're talking about real time real time information about how our students are, are learning um that having that real-time information is the epitome of assessment for learning right because assessment for learning doesn't mean oh i have a quiz that doesn't count for marks it's oh, I have information about what my students know, understand, and can do, and I can respond to that and make adjustments to, to my teaching right there on the spot. And that is what's really going to help our students um, just get better. And, you know, if I find out that, hey, they're way ahead of where I thought they were going to be, yeah. then no problem. I can move faster. I can go, or if I find out that they're, you know, they're struggling with one thing, then I can target that right away. And that's where I really like the, the, the real time feature of Microsoft Forms. It can really help me support assessment for and as learning. And Microsoft Forms, um, it has that feature of real time, but we have to set it up just right. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. I love it. And I just, I wish we could, this is where we need to pause the video and I just, I wanna like print your statement like on a t-shirt or something. Like this is to inform our practice. This isn't about, well, this mark counts and this mark doesn't. And so you really kind of broke down like how this supports teaching and how this supports learning. Cause this, by using this premise, this is gonna help everybody in the classroom. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm thinking about, you know, usually, some people will say, what, what are you talking about assessment for and as learning? And they, they, they really have only really or you heard or used formative assessment. So they're both kinds of formative assessment. So assessment for learning is, you know, really about the feedback and it's, it's specific to the students in your room right now what they're showing you in your room right now, whether it's a virtual room or a face-to-face -face room, <laughs> and then being able to, you know, move and weave and shift according to what they're showing you. That's the assessment for learning part. But there's also the assessment as learning part that becomes part of our formative assessment because this is where we can actively involve our students in that reflection. And of course, you'll see here in that first bullet, it's accompanied by teacher guidance. So not only can Microsoft Forums help us with getting that information right now in real time, but it can also provide a way for us to scaffold this reflective piece and analyzing a student's own performance and, and progress in learning, you know, through this particular tool. I love this. And so like, I have to say Microsoft Forms, 
This is an awesome tool. It's, it's actually quite easy when you can go through the steps, you can do the different pieces, you know, for being able to set it up. But I think it's really neat because like it, it is such an awesome framework for us being able to ask quality questions. We can give feedback right in there. It gives real time information. Um, you've got some great strategy tips for us. Yep. So if I'm looking at, if I'm looking at the Microsoft forums and if I'm really thinking about how it's going to help our students, right? I'm thinking about how is this supporting our learning? So we have that framework, we have that guide for student thinking and reflection, um, and it scaffolds the skills for self-assessment and self-monitoring. Now, it does, it's not going to come naturally. We need to make sure that we talk about it in class and we model it and we show examples as we go, but it is something that can help them get there. Um, and then in terms of supporting the teacher supporting teaching, right? If I have all of those student responses in one organized place for analysis right there, even if I'm just looking at it really briefly during class, then I can start to see patterns. I can identify right away who I need to go to and talk to, who I can say, okay, you're ready to move on, etc. Mm -hmm. If I do this, you know, in the old fashioned way, as you said before, you know, you do a thing, you <laughs> hand it in, then you mark it hopefully that night, but Sometimes it doesn't happen that way. You know, they have to wait a long time to get that. So that automatic identification of displaying student responses um, is, is, is really going to help our students. That's awesome. And so this is free. This is easy. It's built into our Microsoft 365 licensing. And you have even taken it one step further. You have made us an entire tutorial screen recording that I think we're going to get to watch right now that's going to take us through our initial setup of our very first Microsoft Forum, how to do that, and then and really how to look at that assessment for learning, right? Yeah, let's watch. Let's get awesome. started. Usually when we make a form, we log on to our SharePoint, we come up to our app launcher, affectionately known as the Waffle, Give it a click, find forms, and our forms page opens up. And then we can choose to create a quiz or a form. So a quiz is going to have points. A form is just to collect information. So let's click on new form. And we give it a name. And we start entering in what we want the questions to be. All right, so once you've got it all made and ready to go, uh, you will send it. And I'm going to press copy. And then you'll invite your students to respond to your form. So let's go pretend that I'm a student. And I'll put in my name. And I'll rate how prepared I think I am for the upcoming recital. So now when I come back, back to my form, then I can see Okay, I've got my one response. And if I want to analyze these responses, to take a look at a record, that's a little bit easier to look at than this if I have many. I can click on Open in Excel. So watch what happens. As soon as I click there, it downloads. And now I have a file on my hard drive. So I'm going to double click to open it up. And here it is. So now we can see my ID. We can see I've answered the first question and I've answered the second question. So this shows up on my, so let's close this down and let's do it again. SpongeBob feels somewhat unprepared. So let's look here. Now I have two responses. I see it's half and half with my class. So if I open up into Excel, I download another copy, and here now I have two. But having all of these copies gets tricky to monitor as it comes in. Maybe everybody doesn't have the information all at once. Um, maybe I want to see it as it's coming in so I can make decisions right away. But needing to wait to click open in Excel, then download, then open it up, that's going to take a little bit longer. So let's see how we can do this in a way that allows us to see the results come in in real time. 
So let's go back to our SharePoint page because that's usually where we sign on. And this time we're going to, instead of click on forms, we're going to come to OneDrive. And then I'm going to find the folder where I'd like to keep the results. Then what I would do is I would click new and then I would click on forms for Excel and I would give it a name. So I'm not going to do that right now because I've already done it. And what you'll see is when you go to your forms page, so I've got it open, but I'll show you one more time how to get there. Go to the app launcher waffle, click on forms. Here's the new one that I made, that one called real time. It looks exactly the same, but when students provide their answers now, let's watch what happens. So let's go back to our editing page. Do you see how this one looks a little bit different? This one has that cloud. That means we're not going to download a copy of this file onto our hard drive. It means that this is going to be in our OneDrive. It's going to stay online. So let's open it up. And we see, here we go, we've got Ariel is born in April. Let's just put these side by side here. What happens if we do it again? Right away, it showed up right here. Okay, that really was super easy. <laughs> you were so good. You can, you can need to come on over and uh, you know join the MTech team here is what I think. Uh, but if you do need any other support using Microsoft Forms or any other technical tools, don't forget to check out the MTech site. You can see that bitly there. But Jen, you've got an amazing goodie bag for us too, right? Oh, oh yes, yes, for, for sure. sure. Please, Please visit our assessment. assessment. It's right there on the bottom of the page. You can go there, see all of our weekly assessment bites. You can even request an episode Ooh. and <laughs> as well as get all of our other assessment resources. And you know what? Even if you try one of these things and you want to share, let us know. There's a form right there. You can always reach out. Just email one of us and we'll be happy to chat about assessment as always. Oh, I love it. Oh, you're making, you're making me look bad. They can request episodes. I might have to up my game, Jen. I might have to up my game. <laughs> but what I love is this is the first, we hope, of a few crossover episodes. Thanks for being here for both the Chromebook Classroom and Assessment Bites. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.